We thank God for another blessed day. Shall we just look to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Heavenly Father, it's our prayer that you may speak to us in accents clear and still, above the storms of passion and the murmurs of self-will. Speak, Lord, to assure us to hasten and to control. Speak, O oh, Heavenly Father, who is the garden of our souls, in a very special way to us in this day. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Today we are going to revise uh, what we've been learning in the past eight weeks. We've been considering the subject of uh, salvation from sin slavery. We've been looking at uh, pilgrim, the Christian pilgrimage. And this we've been considering under eight lessons that we have learned in the past eight weeks. So we'll look at um, the eight lessons and then I'll briefly just point out the number of things that we should have learned from each of these lessons. In the first lesson, we looked at uh, slavery in the land of Egypt. We noted that the Israelites had been uh, slaves in the land of Egypt for a very long time. Uh, for close to 400 years, they were slaves. And so they had no control of their lives, they had no freedom, and they could not decide on anything that they, they would want to do because they were under the rule of a tyrant pharaoh who would not let, not let them do whatever they would, they, they would have loved to do. So they were under captivity, they were under the control of the king of Egypt who was pharaoh. The Israelites were made to work very hard and they did a lot of hard work and so the Lord had pity on the children of Israel and um, he made a plan and we saw that uh, God made a plan for the children of Israel through baby Moses. At the time that baby Moses was born the Israelites all the, all the babies that were born to the Israelites were being killed or Pharaoh had made a command that all the children of uh, Israelites should be killed, particularly the, the baby sons. And this was because the, the nation of Israel had become very huge. There had been so many. When they had gone to the land of Egypt initially, there were just about 70 men. But then now, there were over 600,000. And so Pharaoh became very fearful and he thought that these Israelites would take over the land of Egypt and so he decided that all the male children would have to be slaughtered but by the grace of God the midwives that saved the children of Israel at birth feared God and so they did not follow the command of Pharaoh and instead they did not kill the baby sons and it so happened that one of the babies that was not killed was baby Moses the mother of Moses kept baby, uh, baby Moses for quite a while, but when he was uh, grown, she had feared that maybe they would find her baby. And so she made a basket and put on the river now and asked the sister Miriam to wash over baby Moses. And so one of these days when the baby Moses was, was in a basket on the river now, Pharaoh's daughter was by the riverside and she heard the baby crying. At this point, Pharaoh's daughter decided to adopt Moses as a son. And so Moses ended up growing up in the palace. He grew up as one of uh, the sons of Pharaoh, or one of the granddaughters of, of Pharaoh. And so he had many privileges. He had um, everything that he needed that you may think of uh, that would be available in the, in the palace. He had so many pleasures that uh, the Israelites didn't have. He was not subjected to suffering that the children of Israel were suffering of hard work and not having freedom and being slaves. Moses lived like a prince in the land of Egypt. And so uh, we noted in our second lesson that um, Moses, when he had fully grown, he made a choice. He made a choice not to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of Egypt, but rather he chose to suffer with the children of Israel. And so 
Moses decided not to be identified as an Egyptian, as an Egyptian, and he chose to be identified with the people of God. He chose to be identified as a Hebrew. So by faith, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, verse 24 to 27, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. So what we noted is that uh, Moses at this point made a choice to follow God, to follow the God of the Israelites. And ultimately what we saw here is the fact that Moses made a choice to be a Christian. Children, in the same manner as the children of Israel were slaves in the land of Egypt, we too, if we have not called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, we are slaves to sin. We have no control over our lives and our lives are managed by another who is certain. And we see uh, in Moses who, in spite of knowing that uh, he had so many pleasures that were ahead of him because of living in the palace, he decided not to pursue the pleasures of Egypt, but rather to identify with himself with the people of God. This is an encouragement to each one of us to know that the world and these desires will pass away, but whoever does the will of God will live forever. So the encouragement to all of us was that we should give our lives to the Lord because the world will pass away and only he who gives his life to the Lord will live forever. In the third lesson, we looked at the call of Moses. God called Moses. Moses had left Egypt and spent many years in the lonely desert minding the father-in-law's ship. And one day, as he was managing the, the ship for the father-in-law, Moses saw a burning bush. This bush was burning, and yet it was not really like burning to ashes. It was still fresh. It was still green, but there was fire on it. So this was really an amazing sight for Moses. So Moses decided to get closer, to just have a look at what is this bush that is burning. So as Moses was getting closer, God called Moses and told him, Moses, Moses, do not get any closer. This, the ground that you're standing on is holy ground. Take off your sandals. And Moses did as the Lord had said. He took off his sandals and bowed before the Lord. We learned that God appeared in the burning bush to show Moses that he is a God who does not delight in sin. We saw that um, God does not want anything to do with uh, sinfulness and that no one can come to Christ in their sinful state. We learned that Jesus is able to make us stand in the presence of God if we confess our sins. We also learned on this account that God has a plan for the life of everyone who has given their lives to God. We also learned that uh, the God of heaven is known as the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of, of, of Jacob. These are men that followed the ways of God, the men that followed the commandments of the Lord. And so the Lord manifested himself to Moses and said, he is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the great I am. We then moved on to the fourth lesson and looked at this, the subject of resisting the Lord. In this subject, we noted that when Moses and Pharaoh, when Moses and Aaron approached Pharaoh to ask if he could let the children of Israel go to the land of Canaan, which was a promised land, 
Pharaoh refused to obey God. Because the time that uh, God had appeared to Moses in a burning bush, he did tell Moses that I want you to go to Pharaoh to ask him to let my people go to the land of Canaan. So in this lesson, this, this fourth lesson, we noted that Pharaoh refused to obey the instruction of the Lord. And because Pharaoh refused to obey the instruction of the Lord, the Lord punished Pharaoh through ten plagues. Do you remember the ten plagues? We noted that the first plague was that of water turning to blood, and then the second was that of the frogs. There were frogs all over the land of Egypt, and then there was lice all over the land of Egypt, and then flies came as a fourth plague. And then as a fifth plague, the animals were dying of a disease. All the livestock suffered some disease that ended up killing them. After that, because Pharaoh still refused to let the children of Israel go, the Lord sent boils. So every Egyptian had boils on their bodies. And these were like sores, sores all over their bodies. Again, Pharaoh did not let the children of Israel go. So God sent a ninth plague, which was a hailstorm. Pharaoh, each time that uh, we had, um, there was a plague, he really pleaded with Moses and asked if the Lord could be merciful to him and uh, let, if we could be merciful to him and let the plague pass. And Moses was always faithful to go back to God, to ask God to let the plague go. But as soon as the plague went, Pharaoh went back on his promise and still refused to let the Israelites go. So after the hailstorm, there was another plague that the Lord sent because Pharaoh still refused to let the children of Israel go. God sent locusts. There was locusts all over the land and the locusts was eating vegetation. So the vegetation was all gone because the locusts ate and they were all over the place. Still Pharaoh refused to obey God. And so Lord, the God, the God sent the ninth plague. And this ninth plague was darkness. There was darkness all over the land of Egypt. It was also very dark. But still, Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go. Boys and girls, like I've said, in the intensity of each plague, Pharaoh ran back to Moses to ask him to plead with God to take away the plague. But as soon as the plague was removed, Pharaoh hardened his heart and did not let the Israelites go. Children, we were urged not to only submit to God in the midst of trouble or in the midst of problems and to change our minds each time that the problem would go. We were encouraged that and we're told the fact that God requires a change of heart and not a change of behavior. The Bible does tell us in 1 John 3 verse 9 that no one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has, he has been born of God. So Pharaoh clearly was not born of God and that's how he kept going back on his promise, on his promise. He kept going back to not letting the children of Israel go, even after he had committed that he would let the children of Israel go. And so the Lord was not pleased with Pharaoh. But we noticed that um, because Pharaoh did not let the children of Israel go, the Lord still sent a tenth plague on the Israelites. This 10th plague, the 10th plague, we considered it when we looked at lesson number five. The title of lesson number five was Redeemed. We noted from our very first lesson that the Israelites became slaves in the foreign land of Egypt for many years. They were never free to do anything they wanted because they did not have control over their own lives and they had no hope of securing their freedom. 
What we know is the fact that um, for slaves, slaves can be redeemed, can be traditionally be freed from slavery if somebody buys their freedom. For the children of Israel, it was not clear that there would be any hope that somebody would actually buy their freedom because they had become so, so many and the Pharaoh was so, so powerful over them so that um, any, any, humanly speaking, any sign of them being freed from slavery was not anywhere near. And so we need to understand that uh, the word redeemed means buying back. And this is where the word redemption comes from. So then when we look at uh, redemption in the Christian sense, we need to understand that um, in the light of Christianity, redemption is the action of being saved from sins, slavery by the Lord Jesus Christ through the blood that the Lord Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary. In the results of redemption would be that the, the former slave would be owned by the one who would actually buy them back. So in this case, whoever could buy the freedom of Israel, of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, would actually own them. And so when we look at the children of Israel, we note that because there are so many, it is very clear that maybe no one, no one under the sun would actually buy their freedom from Pharaoh. And it is clear that only the Almighty God was able to buy their freedom. And this is something that God made very clear as he talked to Moses, as he called Moses. God made it very clear to Moses that he would take the land, the, the Israelites, from their land of slavery. So, how did God buy the freedom of the Israelites? We will look at um, how this actually happened. We noticed that after the ninth plague, Pharaoh told Moses to get away from him and to see his face no more. And he told Moses that he would die if he ever went to see him again. So Moses told Pharaoh that he would never go to see his face again. But then we notice that uh, in Exodus 11 verse 1, God announced the tenth plague. The tenth and final plague was announced to Moses in Exodus 11 verse 1. Shall we just read that? And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out of here altogether. And so, we'll take a bit of time to also just look at uh, the events before the 10th plague. This 10th plague was actually the death of all the firstborn of Egypt, men and animals alike. So what really happened before this plague was inflicted in Egypt? Number one, God gave Moses and Aaron instructions for the Israelites to follow so that they could be saved from the 10th plague. Each family was asked to kill a male lamb, a male lamb that was uh, not deformed and that had no spot, no wrinkle, is what the Lord asked Moses to tell the children of Israel to slaughter. So they were told to slaughter and that the blood that would flow from the slaughtered animal would have to be sprinkled on the door frames, on the sides and on top of the, of the door. The Israelites were also instructed to stay in their houses. They were told to stay in their houses and to roast these, um, the animal, that male lamb, without spots or wrinkle, without any blemish. They were told to roast it over the fire, to roast it whole, not cut in pieces, but to roast it whole. And they were told not to boil this, and they were told to eat it in the night. They were told that um, they would have to eat it with bread, without yeast, and with bitter herbs. 
the children of Israel were told that nothing would be left for the morning. And so they were told that um, if anything was left, then they would have to burn it completely in the fire. So these instructions were given to each of the Israelites. Number one, to kill only male animals without spot or blemish. Number two, to sprinkle the blood of the animals on the doorpost, on the side and on top. Number three, to eat the animals within their houses and to burn whatever would remain. So the Israelites did as Moses, as Moses had commanded them. And so they followed each of these instructions. And in the night, the angel of death went through the entire land of Egypt, including where the Israelites were living in the land of Goshen, which was within Egypt. In the previous uh, plagues that had occurred in Egypt, none of those plagues were, were inflicted. None of those plagues were inflicted on the Israelites. But this time around, on the very last plague, the angel of the Lord even went to the, where the Israelites were living in the land of Goshen. And when the angel of death was passing through Goshen, wherever there was blood sp sprinkled on the door, on the doorpost, the angel of death would not kill man or any livestock for that particular household. And it happened at midnight that all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the captive who was in the prison and all the firstborn of the cattle, Pharaoh got up in, in the night along with all his servants and all Egypt, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was no house in which there was not someone dead. So each household had someone dying when the Lord inflicted the tenth plague. But the angel of death passed over all the doors that had been sprinkled, that had sprinkled blood on the doors. This remarkable event in history is what is referred to as the Passover, and the Lord told the Israelites to commemorate it, to remember this day that uh, the Lord saved them from the death of, the, of their firstborns. God had warned Pharaoh many times, as we saw in the, ninth, in the nine plagues, and now God inflicted the tenth plague of the death of all the firstborns that made the tyrant Pharaoh to submit to God. So finally, we see that Pharaoh submitted to God, he gave in to let the children of Israel go. Shall we just read Exodus 12, verse 31 to 36? Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron in the night and said, Get up, get out from among my people, both you and the Israelites. Go, save the Lord as you have requested. Also, take your flocks and your heads, just as you have requested, and leave. But bless me also. The Egyptians were urging the people on in order to send them out of the land quickly, for they were saying, We are all dead. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added, with their kneading troughs bound up in their clothing on their shoulders. Now the Israelites had done as Moses told them. They had requested from the Egyptians silver and gold items and clothing. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and they gave them whatever they wanted, and so they plundered Egypt. So children, how does the Passover apply to us? Just as the Israelites had a valued possession, which was uh, the lamb, the Lord had asked that they would take a lamb without spots, without blemish. And so the Lord God of heaven sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was without sin to come and pay for our sin. And just as uh, each Israelite had to personally take a lamb and slaughter and sprinkle the blood on the doorpost, so we also must personally come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We must take a step of faith to trust Jesus as our personal Savior and our Lord 
and to ask him for the forgiveness of, of our sins. In the Passover, the blood that was sprinkled on the door sides, on the door posts, and on top of the door frames, that blood is what made the firstborn of the Israelites not die by the tenth plague. In the same manner, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary is the one that buys our freedom from sin's slavery. So all we need to do is call on the name of the Lord for salvation and we shall be freed from sin's slavery. Boys and girls, trust in Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and you will know salvation from sin's slavery. Just as the Israelites were told to remember the Sabbath, we too must make some time to remember the Lord's doing, to remember how God has saved us from the destruction to come, which is hell, for those that do not call on the name of the Lord for salvation. In the fifth, sixth, and seventh lesson, we learned about guidance, protection, and God's provision. And in these lessons, we we saw a clear demonstration of how God guides, protects, and provides for his own children. When we looked at the subject of guidance, we noted that after the children of Israel were freed from the land of slavery, when Pharaoh said they could actually go, they knew where they were heading to. They knew that they were heading to the land of Canaan. The Lord was mindful of the state of the children of Israel who had been slaves for many years, for many generations, in the land of Egypt, the Lord was alive to the fact that the Israelites knew nothing about life in the wilderness and they knew nothing about fighting. And so the Lord led them through a way that was not to pass through the Philistines who would probably could have been fighting with them. So the Lord led them in a way through the wilderness. And when God guided the children of Israel through the wilderness, he led them by cloud during the day, and he led them by fire during the night. Although God could have easily protected them against the Philistines, he knew that their faith was weak and their hearts fickle, and he did not want them retreating to Egypt out of fear. The Lord was completely familiar with the nature of the Israelites and guided them accordingly. Remember, boys, that God guided them continuously so that they were completely dependent on his presence. God led them by fire and by clouds throughout. Just as the Israelites were guided by God and were dependent on the Lord's guidance, we too must always look for, to God for guidance. The Lord guides us through his word. He spells us. He spells out in, the way, in his word how we ought to live as people that have called on the name of the Lord. And through many life of life's experiences, God also shows us the way that we ought to go. And so it is important for each one of us to follow the Lord's uh, leading. We were encouraged uh, by uh, what is spelled out in the scripture, that is Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, that we ought to trust in the Lord with all our hearts, and not to lean on our own understanding, but that in all our ways we should acknowledge God and God will direct our path. We then look at, we looked at the subject of protection. And on this subject of protection, we noted that even though Pharaoh had let the children of Israel go, he afterwards changed his mind he once again changed his mind about the Israelites and decided to follow them. He committed not only his most elite cheros, but also the others. Pharaoh, with the host of chariots, was in close pursuit of the Israelites. When the Israelites saw the Egyptians approach, they were terrified and immediately questioned the wisdom of Moses of letting them go out of the land of Egypt, they asked Moses, did you take us out of the land of Egypt only to die at the hands of the Egyptians in the wilderness? But Moses spoke to the Israelites. We read in Exodus 14 verse 13, 
Moses said to the people, Do not fear, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord that he will provide for you today. For the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you can still, and you can be still. And we saw that the Lord indeed fought, the, fought for the Israelites. The Lord God of heaven went before the camp of the Israelites. He moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. It came between the Egyptian camp and the Israelite camp. It was a dark cloud and it lit up the night so that one camp did not come near the other the whole night. Moses stretched out his hand toward the sea and the Lord drove the sea apart by a strong east wind all that night and he made the sea into dry ground and the water was divided. So the Israelites went through the middle of the sea on dry ground, the water forming a wall for them on the right and on their left. The Egyptians chased them and followed them into the middle of the sea. All the horses of Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. What we saw is that uh, the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. After the children of Israel had crossed the Lord caused the sea to return, and all the Egyptians drowned. They all drowned, and they all died. And that is how God saved the children of Israel. God protected the children of Israel from the Egyptians that were pursuing them. Boys and girls, when we are faced with a challenge, we need to recognize the fact that the Lord is our protector. God will protect you from the power of sin and from the power of Satan and from the schemes of Satan and his agents. Just as the Lord fought for the Israelites, making even their chariots store not to move properly, the Lord will protect his own each time that his children are in danger. We need not to be like the ever grumbling, ever doubtful children of Israel, but we always need to look to God. We always need to turn to God as Moses did each time that he needed God's help and God's protection. We saw that uh, God demonstrated his kindness and care even to these grumbling people of the children of Israel. And so he protected them from dying at the hands of Pharaoh. We then moved to the last lesson under the subject of uh, provision. When the children of Israel had moved for three days, they lacked water, and later on, they lacked um, food. So the Lord, by his mercy and by his power, gave water to the children of Israel. We noticed that uh, when they went to Mara, they found bitter water. And when they found bitter water, God uh, provided water through Moses. The children of Israel had complained about the bitter water at Marah. And so God told Moses to take um, a tree, a branch from a tree, and throw it in the water. And when Moses did that, the water became sweet and it was good for drinking. Later, when they moved to the wilderness of sin, the children of Israel didn't have uh, food. Again, they complained to Moses saying, did you bring us here to die of hunger? Again, Moses cried to the Lord and the Lord gave the children of Israel manna for their bread and he gave them quails for their meat and so their hunger was satisfied. Later on when the children of Israel went to Rephidim they did not find any, any water. I complained bitterly to Moses. They were so forgetful about how the Lord had dealt with them and how God had provided for them that they kept on complaining and grumbling. Again, Moses called on the Lord, and the Lord asked Moses to strike a rock at Horeb, at Mount Horeb. And when Moses did that, water gushed out, and there was enough water for the children of Israel to drink. So there was food and water for the children of Israel to drink and to eat. So children, just as God provided 
for the children of Israel, God does provide for us. He gives us water. He also gives us food. God provides for our spiritual well-being and he also provides for our physical well-being. In providing for our spiritual well-being, God sent his son Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross of Calvary so that whoever believes in him will not thirst nor hunger, but whoever calls on the name of the Lord will know abundant life, will know a life that is full of purpose. God also does provide for the things that we need for life. God gives us food and gives us um, protection, just as he did for the children of Israel. So we need not be like the children of Israel, who when they were faced with problems, always complained uh, to Moses. But we need to remember that as we journey through life, the Lord is with us. God will provide all our needs. The Lord will provide all our needs according to his riches and glory. He has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In closing, children, I would like to pose some questions to you. Who will you be like? Will you be like Pharaoh? Who, even after seeing God's power, he still resisted the Lord. He still refused to let the children of Israel go. He still opted to remain proud, to remain in his sin, and to not let the children of Israel go. We saw that because Pharaoh remained in this state, the Lord punished him. And in the end, the Israelites, the, the Egyptians and the, the armies drowned in the sea. They went into destruction. So if you decide to be like Pharaoh, you will be distracted. Your end will be destruction. For the wages of sin is death. Will you be like the Israelites? The Israelites, even though they followed God, they followed the leading of God, which was done by fire and by clouds, each moment that they were faced with a problem, each moment they were faced with a, a challenge, they grumbled, they complained, and they forgot how the Lord had dealt with them previously. And so they kept on complaining. This is not something that uh, is pleasing in the sight of God. We need to know that if we choose to take this path of the Israelites, who were ever complaining, ever grumbling, it is not something that will please God. But we need to remember that God delights in us, trusting him for his provision, trusting him for his guidance, trusting him for his protection each time that we are faced with challenges in life. Will you be like Moses? Moses, when God called him, responded to God's call and he obeyed what the Lord had told him. Yes, he had moments where he feared, but the Lord encouraged Moses. And in God encouraging Moses, he was given Aaron to help him through and to help him through the journey of the Israelites coming from Egypt to the land of Canaan. And so Moses followed the Lord's leading and each time he was confronted with the problem he called on god he he trusted god my encouragement to you is that you may be like moses who made a decision not to follow the fleeting pleasures of egypt but he decided to identify himself with the people of god he decided to follow the god of heaven the great i am and when he followed the god of heaven the great i am and he was faced with challenges and problems, Moses called on the name of the Lord, and the Lord did hear him, and the Lord did answer him. And so too will God answer your prayers when you call on his name. Shall we just close in prayer? Father God in heaven, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the many ways that you have demonstrated um, the way that you lead your children. It is our prayer that Heavenly Father, you may help us to see the footmarks of the Lord Jesus Christ, that in them we may plant our own, that God Almighty will follow your guidance, that we will always remember that you provide for us and you protect for us. Father, forgive us for the many times that we have not trusted you, but we pray that you may help us to trust in you and not to lean on our own understanding. 
Father, we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Yeah.